What? Yo! What is up, youth fam? It is 
My Wednesday. favorite. It is my favorite day of the week. Wednesday. It's Wednesday, my favorite day of the week. No, my favorite day of the week. Okay, it's both of our favorite yeah. days of the week. We got a dope service for you tonight, That's so right. stay tuned. But before that, we got a big announcement. Oh, it's a big one. We're, we're launching something this weekend that's going to be super weekend. dope. Miranda, what is it? Small group. Small groups. If you are not a part of a small group, you need to yes, be a part of it. you better. If you haven't seen that already, there's a giant booth outside. It says small groups. You don't want to miss you and get connected if you aren't already. Miranda, what's your favorite part about small groups? The community. Sure. I love that. Sure. I love what, that. What group are you part of? I am part of the 9th and 10th in Clear Lake. So if you are in Clear Lake and you are in 9th or 10th grade, go ahead and make your way well, to I, me. I'm in, I'm in 9th and 10th grade as well. So oh, you're, you're make your in, way you're in to tenth me. Wait, you're in 10th grade? I'm in, you're, you're in 10th grade, grade and you live in Clear Lake, so you should come to mine. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. So typically we, we play a game here yes. in this segment, but we're going to switch it up a little bit. Just a little bit. Mix Just it up. Yeah. Just, and Miranda, what are we doing today? We are gonna do youth got talent. We got youth's some got talent. major talent That's in right. the youth ministry. Not a lot of people know this, but we no. have some talented people in our ministry. Do, do you have a talent? Do I have a talent? I, 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 I mean, I, do um, you have a talent? I'm, I do. Okay, and what is it? I'm a really good lip singer. Are you really? Yeah. Can you actually? Can Mi you show us? Yeah. Can you show us? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, I'll go. Out, I'll play a song for you, and okay, then you can on. just Ready? you can lip sync it. All right, here we go. Let it go. Let it go. Turn away and slam my door. Wow, she's really good. She is really good. Now, what about yours? Now, you killed it, but I think I killed him. I can, I mean, I can I can do a backflip. I've never done one before, but he we can't can do just, it. I don't believe it. You don't think so? I, I've never I done one, so I, I'm just going to try it. I'm kind of scared with you trying it live. I you've might, never done it before. I, I might break my neck, but we'll see what happens. You want me to try it? I mean, do you guys want me to try it? If you're in there, make some noise. You can hear can it, it from you can yeah. hear it from there. Yeah, that's right. Okay. I think the people want they to want do it. it. They yeah, want it. They want it. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Here you go. You want me to know this? Okay. Yeah, just get out of the way. Okay. I'll, okay. I'll kick in the face. Okay. Here we go. Let's go. Hey! Wow. That that hey. turned out a lot differently. <laughs> I, I I really thought I was gonna break you, my neck you there. Really hit. I was a little scared that I would you know. I was scared we too. We have to cut the cameras. That's and right. But it worked go out. To so service, go to that's service. good. Yeah. Man, not only do we have pretty awesome talents, but we also have somebody with us. That's a part of the youth yes, fam. Yes, we do. We've got Jaden Long. Long Jaden, come Jayden. on. Come hey. on in. Oh, Jayden. yes. Now, now Jaden has a very, very special talent. Jaden, what is your talent? Um, I like to sing. She likes to sing. Okay. Are you gonna, are well, you I mean, sing she, for us today? you sang for us today. Yes. Yeah. And it was pretty good. So yeah. you're going to have to top that, which <laughs> yeah. would be really, really hard. No, real quick. Uh, are you a part of small, small groups? Yeah, I'm actually in the same one as you. She's are in the you? same hey. one as me. We are leading one together. The 9th and 10th in Clear Lake. Are so you serious? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Well, so you have enough people. We, the, we, need, to, we need to spread the love. Well, no, there's never enough things. people. That's the thing. There's never enough people. Come on this way. There's <laughs> never enough people. But anyways, Jaden's going to show us her talent. Yes. So Jaden, whenever you are ready. What are you, you going to sing? What are you going to sing for us today? I'll go ahead, yeah. Um, it's an older song. It's called Ain't No Sunshine When She's Gone. Whoa. <laughs> Never heard of it, but I bet it's going to be good. Okay. All right. right. Jaden, whenever you're ready, go ahead. <laughs> All right. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. Only dark skies when she's away. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. This house, it ain't no home Anytime she goes away And I know, I know, I know, I know I know, I know, I know, I know Man, you better leave the young thing alone Cause ain't no sunshine when she's gone Oh my, oh my goodness! God. Okay, I think she beats both of us Oh, definitely, there definitely was no doubt about that I didn't know if this was Jaden or Adele I was not <laughs> sure at all but okay, we have an thank you so much yes, for doing that, Jaden. That took a lot of guts, and wow. you absolutely killed it. Yes, you killed it. But we for have sure. a super dope service planned yes. for you, and it's something to be excited about. We got some new heat dropping. Pastor Lisha's gonna drop some heat some tonight. Fire. You already some know. Fire. We got an after party after service. Come on we got now. small groups, so much to celebrate. That's right, so. that's right. So you go ahead, you know what time it is. Go ahead and stand up on your feet. We're gonna go into a time of praise and worship. We love you guys. Let's get it. Peace.
Your love is breathing out into my life. You take my burdens and you make them light. You make them light. Bring me a sound that will break the night. I choose to follow you for all my life. I know that you were always by my side. You're by my side. In everything we do, we choose to praise you. No matter what they say, we will go your way. Dancing to your beat, we can't contain it. We're letting heaven loose as we celebrate. This is how we party. Lift it up, the name of Jesus. Every moment in your freedom makes me want to dance. Youth. Today we're going to be doing the rock, paper, scissors challenge, and it's not just regular rock, paper, scissors, it's rock, paper, scissors with a twist. So let's get into this. Bro, oh, can you not open What you got there, buddy? Okay. All purpose flower. Wow, you can read. What's your button? Oh, don't that. There. Oh, hey, hey, you're making a video. You don't know, you don't know, huh? Uh, you can't do that. It's actually cheating. 
Oh, more, more, more. Put some mo. 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 Oh my god! Oh my god! Tell me when. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you when. Keep going, keep on going. I want the whole bottle on there, buddy. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! What's one next? Now you, now you know how it feels, right? <laughs> what is that? What is it? This is uh. You better say it right. Tahin. There you go. Try in the eyes. Hey, you better close your eyes. All right, I think that's good. That's good. There you go. <laughs> All right, rock, paper, scissors, shoot. <laughs> It's good! It's good! Chocolate syrup? <laughs> Tell me when. Oh, buddy, you already know I'm gonna have you keep going. Alright, you ready? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Come on now. Right. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's good! That's good! Woo! <laughs> Girl, why are you built like that? Uh, we have um, Cheetos. There you go. There you go. Yeah. You have to use it. Okay. There you go. Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, shoot. shoot. Oh! <laughs> you got it all. Oh! <laughs> Double or nothing. Gabby just won. Wait, what? Thank you guys for joining us. We love you. Stay tuned for the rest of the service. What, what is up, oh, you family? So excited to have y'all here in the house. If y'all are excited to be here, make some noise. Let's go, let's go, let's go. All right, so y'all know what time it is. Do Kobe, they, tell us. Do tell us what time, time it is, guys. It's seven, no, I'm just playing, it's not seven, it is seven, seventeen, but guys, it's game time. My favorite, not my favorite time, I promise, it's worship, but I, one of my favorite times of the service, man, is game time, man. It's I'm gonna go ahead time. and invite our people up real quick, come on, y'all. All, All right, so we're gonna explain no, no. the game real quick. This game is called Stomp. The yard. So basically, obviously, y'all see they got balloons around their ankles. Come on, guys, come on. It's boy versus girls. They're gonna be in a circle and they're gonna have to pop each other's balloons. First people, first group to pop the most balloons wins. There's really no particular rule to this, but they're gonna get in a circle. They're gonna link arms. Gotta get in a there circle. Go, boy, girl, boy, girl. Come on, guys. All right, y'all can scoot up a little. Let's All right, so basically what they're going to do is as they get ready, basically how it is, is they link arms, boy, girl, boy, girl, and as they go, they have to stomp each other's balloons. It is guys versus girl, obviously, at the end. Whoever has the most balloons obviously wins. We're ready? All right, All right cool, guys, cool, let's cool, go. Cool. Ready, set, go. Start popping balloons. You got to cheer for each other. This is going so fast. I hope you know. so I many people. Y'all got to link arms. Popping. Link arms again. Y'all can't let go. Put your foot on the floor. Oh, there goes another one. We got hey, three no, girls and hey, two boys. Get out. Don't get stomped out, linked guys. Arms. Come on. They're not linked arms right now, but that's okay. Oh, Ooh, we got another one out. Come on, guys. We got the last on, boy, on, guys. On, on. Cheer on the teams. We got the last come boy. On. Let's go, Casey. It's 2v1. Link arms, it's link arms. 2v1. Let's go, y'all. Here we go. Cheer hey, on the team. Hey, greatest comeback in the century. Greatest comeback in the century. Oh, let's go. Let's go. We got boy versus girl. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, we almost got it. So close. Oh, Dude, you're so close. So close. Go. Come on. Go, go. Let's go. Oh, boys, Let's boys. go. There we go. Good job. That's how we do it, man. The girls, but sadly, the boys won. Boys All right, y'all can make us say off the we stage. Y'all good. Go. Can turn Great job, everybody. To the screen. screen time. Let us just come right out with it. Small groups are still happening. 
Now, not how we knew them to be, but exactly what we need them to be. Get your snacks and have a watch party, or if you're like every other student, save the snacks all for yourself and tune in from your room. Either way you choose, you can be a part of a small group. You can still be connected to a community that cares about you. You can still laugh your heads off or lose your mind playing games each week. Not only that, but small groups is still a place to grow in your relationship with God and learn more of his word each and every day. Small groups are a place to have a real conversation that actually goes somewhere and accomplishes something. It's a place that makes laying our burdens down easy and connecting with God a habit. Small groups make the big problems in life seem like small problems in life. So find a small group and hop on because we all know that small groups are a big deal. If you want to do better and accomplish bigger things this fall, we will see you at a small group. Just the way it is. Yes. You better be. The answer has to be yes. So I'm happy it says, what are you most excited about this semester for small groups? Games. Games? games. What kind of games? Because we're online, right? We're 100% uh, online on Zoom. There's that one game where you have to go throughout your house and you got to go get the stuff. That one game. Yeah. Yeah, it's that, that one game. It's his favorite game. He it's knows all about game. it. It's, so tell me real quick. I know that it's super easy to get plugged into a small group, right? Because they're online. There's literally zero excuse for you not to be a part of small groups this year. Zero. Which I think that means we should have every single person in this room a part of small groups all of this you. semester. Last semester, when we were doing it on Zoom near the end, we literally had somebody who was fishing, okay? He's literally sitting by a lake, had his fishing pole, was fishing during small groups, had his AirPods in, just a part of small groups. There's literally, whether you're in the car, whether you're at home, whether you're fishing, no excuse to not be a part of a small group this semester. No it's also so easy to jump into a small group. Can so, you tell us so real quick how to do that? So on your way in, you probably got one of these. If you didn't, the leader was You have it right now, job. put it up in the air. Up in the air. Up, up, up. I'm not gonna do that again. All right, if you do not have one right now, don't worry, we have some for you as you leave. We will get them for you. What are, what do we do with them exactly, Austin? So there's a big square on the front. The now square. You, you take your phone out like this. Yes. And you take your camera out and you scan the square. You it's scan called a QR square. code. A QR you scan code. It. It'll take you to a website or something like that. It's gonna take you to a website, yes. And you fill out the stuff. And, and then you sign up for a group. And then you push submit or whatever it says. It's literally a click, click, click. And then you're in a small group. It's a click, it's click, pretty, click. It's, and then to it's, get in. It's pretty easy. It's pretty easy. If Austin can do it, everybody can do it. If I can do it. That made it sound like you weren't smart, Austin. You're super smart. Anyway, what we're trying to say is it's super easy to be a part of a small group this semester. Pretty easy. We're going to see you there, right? They better. They better be there. All right. Now that you know everything about small groups, you know what time of the night it is. It is spam time. Spam so time. Go ahead and get up on your feet Ooh. right now and turn around and greet the people around you. Obviously, we're still social distancing, so make sure to be mindful of that throughout the night. Maybe give them a little distance. Hello. Six feet. Six if you feet. are online right now, go ahead and start shouting out your friends. School's back in session, right? School's back. School is back in session. So go ahead and tell I'm us what school. grade you're in, where you're going to school. I, I'm so happy we're doing fam time again. Like, my one of my favorite things ever is watching people interact and just, like, greet each other during this time. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I it's mean, watching community happen, right? Yeah. It's yeah. like the heart of the exactly. youth. Exactly. But now, you guys, as you go ahead and head on back to your seats and we go into a time of worship, I just want to encourage you guys that as we enter in back to routine, as we go back to school, as our schedules look a little bit more routine, let's not make it a routine to just come in here and to just ignore this part of service, to just skip right over it. What I encourage you and challenge us all today is to enter into this time with open and available hearts, saying, God, here I am, do something in me. 
Can you all just bow your heads as we pray? God, we just thank you for this time. And we, we ask for you to do something special inside of us tonight, God. As we prepare our hearts for the rest of service, we give you our hearts. God, we give you our minds. And we give you the works of our hands. And we ask for you, God, to move. As we lift your name up and as we praise you, God, we say thank you for who you are and for what you are doing, God. We give you all the glory and the honor. And we say amen, God. Let's worship. today. I search the world. It couldn't fill me. And man's empty praise and treasures the faith.
wherever you are. I know it. God is going to do something amazing. He's about to wreck you. So don't go anywhere and you guys get ready because God is going to do something great in your life. Let's get it. A blazer? You're going to make me put a blazer? It's not a blazer. It's a cracker. It's a blazer. What's, What's up, up you fam? fam? 
Small groups are launching in four days. There's no reason for you not to be there. Come, come through, come through. I am leading a J High small group with Brianna and Vanessa. So if you're a J High girl, come through. Yeah. I'm not a J High girl. You build the community. So are we running? Develop strong relationships. And you gain a connection with your people Peace. your age. So come through. Okay. Come through. So last year we were able to <laughs> So last year we were able to step foot on so many campuses. So this year, Monday, Tuesday, September 28th through the 29th, we're going to be coming to your campuses bringing some Gatorades and stuff like that. Let me know if you play a sport like basketball, volleyball, tennis, you know, or if you even play an instrument. Let us know how many people are there, what you want, and we'll show up. We'll be there. Make sure that you DM us on Instagram at Grace Youth Official and make sure that everything is all clear with your coach. Um, over the years, we've recorded multiple videos, whether it be series, The Elephant Room, funny videos, whatever it is, we got it. So go to our YouTube page and watch them, I guess. I don't know. Everything is, is okay? accessible to you. We want, it to, we want it to be accessible to you. So get on our YouTube page, watch our videos. Accessible. Okay. It's really hot. <laughs> Have you been trying to find ways so that you can serve your community? Yes. Well, we got you. Yeah, we got you covered. So make sure that you head on over to mygrace.com to where you can find so many ideas on how you can serve it to your community. <laughs> So make sure that you head on over to mygrace.com where you can find so many ideas on how you can get involved and serve your community. Um, we want to see your face Sunday, so come to our 9 a.m., 11 a.m. service or 2 p.m. if you speak Spanish. So, can We want you here in this building she on Sunday. That's all we have for you today. So as always, follow us on the IG for the most up-to-date information. But you already know what time it is. The message starts now. <laughs> I know. Grace Youth, how we feeling tonight? We feeling good? Yes. Man, I hope that you caught worship online. If you didn't, hit the rewind button and hit play because it went off tonight. Can we give it up for our worship team, man? Second to none, those guys. Love our worship team. Some powerful stuff. Well, tonight, uh, tonight I'm going to be preaching uh, what we like to call a standalone message. And basically what this means is it's not a part of a series. A lot of times when you come to Grace Youth, you log on at 7 o'clock. When we get to the message portion, you can see that the message is a part of a collection of other messages. Usually we'll preach for four weeks, five weeks, sometimes six weeks uh, about a specific subject or topic, and we'll hit it from a lot of different angles. But every so often... I really feel like God puts like a specific word for the moment and the time uh, on our heart that, man, doesn't necessarily fit in a series, but just needs to stand on its own, by itself, apart. And so tonight is that. If you're taking notes, in fact, I would, I would ask, if you're not a note taker, everybody tonight, go ahead and pull out your cell phone, open up a brand new notes page. Uh, tonight, if you walked in on the back side of that small group piece of paper, it's actually, uh, there's a section called notes. So if you like taking notes old school, you've been missing the in-person uh, school note taken. You want to put pen to paper, we've already set you up for it right there. However you're taking notes tonight, at the top of that page, I want you to write the title of my message. And as soon as you're done writing, I want you to say it to the person next to you. Say this, say, I don't got it. I don't got it. If you're joining us online, throw it in the chats. Shout it from your room so your mom's like, oh, what's going on? Say, I don't got it. All right, turn to somebody else. Uh, maybe, maybe your second choice, your third choice, your sixth choice. Maybe the girl that you're too shy to talk to, but she's sitting next to you. Say, I don't got it. I don't got it. I don't got it. Have you ever been to a, like a restaurant before and the bill comes and you thought you had your wallet on you? 
you thought there was maybe more on your debit card. You thought mommy had like dropped some money in your account. And now there's that embarrassing moment where the Taco Bell employee is there and you're here and you can't pay for your chalupa. Or maybe you're out on a date. Dudes, has this ever happened to you? You're out on a date and you went all out. You said, girl, anything on this Chick-fil-A menu you can have. Even the, the new peach milkshake, which slaps, it smacks, right? Even, you can have the peach milkshake, anything. And then it comes time, you pull out the wallet and you go to scan, and they're like, sir, your card is declined. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> Sounds like we, we actually have somebody that's lived through that. How embarrassing. Or what if it wasn't, <laughs> what if it wasn't um, like monetarily, it wasn't money, but you showed up to take a test and there wasn't a single question that you had an answer to. Anybody? Hands. Hands. Let's just be truthful. Let's be honest. You're like, wait, am I in the wrong class? Because nothing on this makes sense. Or maybe you're on the football field and you're getting clobbered. Where are my football players at? Come on, raise your hands. And you know what's on the other side of the field is way bigger than you. And you go to the locker room and you're looking at your boys going, we ain't got it. Something's happening, but whatever's happening, all I know is we don't got it. I think we've all had a moment, and, and I know that we're talking like funny scenarios, and some of y'all are like, nah, ball is life, man, that ain't funny. Chill out a little bit, man, it's okay, <laughs> there's life after ball, I promise. I know we're talking like funny scenarios, but what happens when like this applies to real life situations and scenarios? When you're walking through something, maybe your family's walking through something. Maybe it's your parents trying to figure out how they're going to make it through another month financially, and they're just going, I, we don't have it. I don't got it. I feel like, and, and maybe you can empathize or, or, or agree with me, but I feel like 2020 has been thing after thing where we're just going, we don't got it. When it comes to school, I don't, I, I don't have the attention span to spend six hours online looking at a screen and a teacher trying to figure out how to teach. I don't got it. I don't got the attention span. Or you're opening up IG and it's another riot or it's another hate speech something or it's another, and you're just like emotionally you're exhausted and you're like, I just, I don't got it. Or maybe for some of you, it's the, it's the excitement or the passion for your your relationship with Christ, you rewind six months ago and you had it, but now you're looking around going, I, I don't got it. Or maybe it's, maybe it's something that you're actually trying to attempt, a, a habit that you're trying to kick, an addiction that you're trying to get over, a mindset that you're trying to fix, and you just keep coming up against the wall and you keep going, I don't got it. There's been a lot of times and moments in my life I've felt exactly this way. I know we were talking 2020, and man, there have been so many moments this year where I just, I'm looking up at, at God in heaven, and I'm going, God, I, I don't got it. I know that this is what the people need, but I, I don't have it. I know that this is what it, it requires for my family, but, but Lord, I don't possess it. I know, I know what I need, and, and God, I, I don't have it. I don't got it. And I hope that tonight maybe you can be real, maybe not with me, but with yourself and, and examine some things in your life, some areas in your life where if you were to put your hands in your pocket looking for what you were needing, you would you turn up going, I don't got it. I don't got it. I don't got it. What's great is you and I in this room, uh, this issue of feeling like we're ill-equipped or not well-prepared or, or lacking something that isn't unique to 2020. That's not even unique to your generation. But this book, the Bible, is filled with people, situations and circumstances that they walked through where they too went, yo, I don't got it. I don't have it. I know that I need it, but I don't got it. And we see so many times where God in his infinite love, where Jesus in his uh, 
unlimited power shows up and helps people as they got real with themselves and had a real encounter with their Savior, with their Heavenly Father, and, and something changed, something shifted, something happened. Something was fixed, something was healed, something was broken off of. There was something that, that, that took place. So what I want to do tonight is I want to I look at one specific story. In fact, preparing for tonight, I had, so, I had so much trouble trying to narrow it down. God, what is one story that I could share that would help to, to communicate this idea of somebody being without, that they didn't have it and Jesus stepping into it? I mean, this book is filled, like the, the, the hallmark of our faith is a people going, we don't have it, and God going, I realize it, so I'm going to send my son Jesus to step into it so that you can possess it. But more than just Jesus coming, because, and, and not that that isn't enough, but I just, God, the human condition, how can teenagers in 2020 empathize with somebody in Scripture where they see themselves, somebody who is without, that is lacking, that needs something, somebody that, that, that goes, I don't got it. God, give me just, give me a story. So turn with me, if you would, to John chapter 5, whether it's on your phone or written in ink on paper, however you're reading your Bible tonight, I want you to turn there. And don't just watch it on the screen. If you got your Bible with you, I want you to turn there in, uh, in your physical or digital Bible. Let's, let's read this together. If you're joining us online, we're going to start in chapter 5, verse 1. It says this. Afterward, Jesus returned to Jerusalem for one of the, G- the Jewish, ho- excuse me, one of the Jewish holy days. Inside the city near the sheep gate was the pool of Bethesda with five covered porches. It says crowds of sick people, blind, lame, or paralyzed, lay at the porches. Crowd. It doesn't even give a number. There are just, there are so many people that have huge needs and they all gather together at these porches. Verse 5. One of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. Can you imagine being sick for 38 years? Like, I'm angry if I have a headache for 38 minutes. Can you imagine having an ailment for 38 years? Like, I'm not even 38. So to be sick for longer than I'm even alive, that's nuts. This dude has an issue that he has had for 38 years. It's a long time. It's a long time. Verse 6 says this, when Jesus saw him and knew he had been ill for a long time, he asked him, would you like to get well? Now, let me just pause here. If you were sick for 38 years and Jesus walked up to you and said, do you want to get well, what would be your response? That's not a trick question. What, what, what would be your response? Yes, sir. Oh, I like that. Look, 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 a little, a little respect. Yes! It's a no-brainer. Why wouldn't I want to? If somebody came up to me and said, do you want to, you want to be well? I know you struggled for 38 years. You want to get better? Of course. Give me some emergency. Give me some OJ. Give me some Pepto-Bismol and with the, like a, like an antibiotic chaser. Whatever you got, I want it. Give it to me. I want to get better. Put some essential oils on my head and some Vicks Vapor Rub on my chest like a cough drop. Whatever it takes, I'll take it. Slightly illegal, don't matter. I'll take it if I can be better. Which that will preach in a whole different message. How many of us, we struggle with the same issue for so long and we start to take, ingest, or be a part of things that we know will negatively affect us, but just so that we can get better, we take part in it. I'm talking about relationships. I'm talking about substances and bottles. I'm talking about influence from other people. I'm talking about running to social media. We will try anything when it comes to being sick in mind, heart, body, or spirit. Jesus comes to this man and says, do you want to get well? You know what he says? Verse 7. I can't, sir. Shout out to politeness. (laughs) I can't, sir. 
not yes, not man, I really hope so, not what do you got, what are you trying to tell me? I can't, sir, period. It says, for I have no one to put me in the pool when the water bubbles up. Someone else always gets there ahead of me. Now let me pause here and, and give you a little context. Back in this day, they believed that this pool, when the waters would be stirred up, that, that uh, it had some natural healing properties. So when people would get into the pool, um, something would take place and it would help to heal their, their ailments. The story goes that, um, that, that some even thought there was some sort of divine intervention where when the water would stir up that, that God was, uh, you know, stirring the waters and that when people would make their way in, there was only one person that could get their miracle. So when the one person got in, everybody else that was trying, the miracle wasn't there for them. And we continue to read what kind of dynamic that creates. He says, um, for I have no one to put me in the pool when the water bubbles up. Someone else always gets there ahead of me. So his understanding of not being able to get well was relegated to this one pool and being the first person in. And because he had nobody to take him to the pool and because he couldn't get there fast enough on his own, he began to understand or think or believe about himself in his situation that he would never get better. I don't have it. I don't got it. Verse 8. Jesus sidesteps the whole thing, and he says, stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. He didn't sit there and go, you know, man, that's a, that's a pretty bad situation, and uh, well, maybe I could uh, pick you up some time, or, or maybe if you got here a little bit earlier, you could get a better spot towards the front, and if you got a better spot towards the front, maybe you could like roll really quickly and then get into the pool, and then if you get into the pool ahead of everybody, then he sidestepped the whole excuse said, stand up, pick up your mat, walk. Instantly. Everybody say instantly. Throw it in the chat. Say instantly. The man was healed. He rolled up his sleeping mat and began walking. But this miracle happened on the Sabbath. The Sabbath is the day of rest. Now here in American culture, our Sabbath is Sunday. In Jewish culture, a lot of times, uh, Sabbath was, was, was a Saturday. It was a day where they would not work and they would observe who God was. And they, they had instituted in their culture that on the Sabbath, uh, it was illegal to work. Not only did you not work, it was illegal to. It was punishable. So when Scripture is saying this happened on the Sabbath, there's a reason that they're referencing this. It says, but this miracle happened on the Sabbath, verse 10. So the Jewish leaders objected. Can you imagine? A dude got healed and people are upset because it happened on a Sunday. Chick-fil-A, close on Sunday. People getting all irate because somebody opened up Chick-fil-A. It's supposed to be a church. Chick-fil-A is open. This dude getting healed on a, on, on a Sabbath day. They objected. They said to the man who was cured, you can't work on the Sabbath. The law doesn't allow you to carry that sleeping mat. But he replied, the man who healed me told me, pick up your mat and walk. So all of a sudden he's like, oh, this, this wasn't me. I was, just, it was just this guy passing and he healed me. It's not, I'm sorry. <laughs> Verse 12, who would, who said such a thing as that, they demanded. The man did not know, for Jesus had disappeared into the crowd. I want that story someday. Like Jesus just like, sup, you need something? Boom, here it is. It slips out. <laughs> Where'd Jesus go? The man didn't know, for Jesus had disappeared into the crowd. Verse 14, but afterward Jesus found him in the temple and told him, now, now you are well. So stop sinning, or something worse may happen to you. Then the man went and told the Jewish leaders that it was Jesus who had healed him. Write this down wherever you're taking notes tonight. When I don't have it, I need to look to the one who has always been it. When I don't have it, my default response should be, to the, should be to look to the one who has always been 
it. You say, what is it? It is whatever you have need of. You know what I don't have it sounds like? I don't have it sounds like this is bigger than me. I can't do that. I'll never become that. A lot of times it sounds like, God, me? You want me to do that? I don't have it sounds like I can't get over this. I can't kick this habit. I can't walk away from this negative friendship. I can't get rid of this relationship. I can't put the bottle down. I can't stop having sex. I can't stop logging on to or watching or listening to. I don't have it. So in moments where in my life I'm going, I don't have it, I need to be, my default response better be, I should be looking to the one who has always been it. Thank you, I got one in the room. I'm believing I got hundreds online that are clapping. But I want to pull some things from this story, and man, there are so many truths. I got six and a half minutes to give them to you. Are you ready? Say, I'm ready. I got three. And if we got time, I'll give you a few bonus, but three for sure. Here we go. The first thing that this story shows me is that pain loves company. Why does that matter? Oh, it matters so much. Because who you choose to surround yourself in moments of pain will determine how long you stay in pain and how you process said pain. Scripture talks about how there were crowds of people that were lame and paralyzed and blind. You ever heard this term? Maybe your grandfather or grandmother said it. Birds of a feather flock together. Y'all know what this means? It means those with like situations tend to come around one another. That's why when you're in pain, all of a sudden you start to have other friends that are also in pain and y'all are just commiserating, y'all are licking wounds together and nobody actually gets any better. We just stay in our pain. Pain loves company. And you know what I know about the enemy? The enemy loves to send people your way that are only going to help hold you in pain. But what I know and what you need to know tonight is that we need to surround ourselves with people who will push us towards healing, not keep us locked in pain. And for some of you, your friend groups, let's just be honest for a moment. Your, the, your, rela- your boyfriend, your girlfriend right now is keeping you locked in a state of I don't got it. A place of pain. Remember, again, I don't got it isn't just, um, you know, I'm trying to kick some small habit. It's also uh, stepping out in what God's called me to do. So some of us, we're going, I don't, I don't got an addiction that I need to kick, but you're not able to advance forward in what God's called you to. You're going, God, I can't do that. And God's going, of course you can't. There is, some, there is some commiserating, some pain that you're staying in that I need you to get rid of, to step out of. The people that you surround yourself will determine and dictate how long you stay in that state. This dude said, I don't, I don't got nobody. Guys, 38 years he was ill. Pain loves company. So not only do we for our own lives got to make sure that we're surrounding ourselves with the right type of people and the right type of voices, being wise of of who we're listening to and how we're processing things. Not only is that true of, of who we surround, but we need to watch who we become when others are in pain. Because if we're the person that steps into their pain and just goes, oh, poor you, and, you know, it's okay, and, and we don't ever help to push them towards healing, sometimes, listen, I know, it, it requires some tough love sometimes. I know you're in pain, but let's walk towards healing. I know it feels better to stay unforgiving towards that person that hurts you, but you know what? That's not what God's got for you. He actually wants to heal your heart, not for your heart to stay broken. There is a way to be there for someone in a loving way without keeping them locked in that pain, that frustration, that hurt, that that area of lack. Pain loves company. Loves company. Verse 3 said, crowds of sick people, blind and lame, paralyzed, lay on porches. The second thing the story shows me 
is that I can hold on to my excuses or I can grab a hold of his blessing. And this is big for some of y'all. This is going to set some of y'all free. I can either hold on to my excuses or I can grab a hold of his blessing. I cannot do both. This is Wednesday nights. This is what fuels me, by the way. I can either hold on to what's in my hands or set something down so that I can grab a hold of what's in his. But I cannot do both. I've got a little two-year-old girl. She's the cutest little thing in the world. In the world. There will never be anything cuter. God set the bar really high, and nobody can now, I'm sorry, but when you have kids someday, they will be cute, but not as cute as this one. Sorry. Your mom told you, you were the cutest. She lied. Owen is the cutest. The mornings, a lot of times she'll come down, and she's got about 4,500 different animals. It's something that we're working on in our home. But she'll come down the stairs, her little two-year-old self, hair in her face, pajamas all a mess, talking about, I want, I want Baba. And she'll have an armload of, of her friends. Nando, the alpaca. She'll have kitty cat, which is a kitty cat. She'll have cheap sheep, which is a, a, a penguin. She'll have Mocket, which is a blue horse. She'll have, um, uh, she'll have, she'll have Todd, which is um, uh, another bear. She'll have them all. She'll, she, she'll, have, um, she'll have Daisy Duck. That's a new one. She'll have them all, just all in her arms. She'll, she'll come down and talk about how she wants something else. Baba. She wants her Nala bar, which is a granola bar. She wants her, her yogurt, applesauce. But even if her good, good father, me, wanted to, from the pantry, grab what she's requesting, she can't hold it. She can't have it. She can either set down what is in her arms to grab what she wants or stay holding on to what she has and remain hungry. Now, this is preaching better than you can even hear it. There are some things that you're holding, some friendships, some relationships, some addictions, some habits, some mindsets, some negativity, some unforgiveness. There are some things that you're holding in your life, and while you're telling your heavenly father, I don't got it, he's telling you, I have it, I am it, and if you would just put the things down, I could give it to you. But you cannot hold both your excuses of why you cannot get better and also grab a hold of the blessing that he's trying to give you. It's impossible. A lot of times, it's not other people that are the biggest hindrance to what God wants to do. We are. I am. God, I don't got it. And he's going, I know. But if you would just put down the excuses, I could give you my blessing. And tonight, tonight my question to you would be, what is it that you are accepting as truth that God wants to bring a new reality to? Never accept a reality that God can't change. This dude had begun to believe about his reality that it would never be different. You and I, we need to know who it is that is in heaven looking out for us. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. The one who holds the whole earth in his hands. The one that spoke existence into existence with words. The one who created everything that we know in six days and on the seventh rested. He is the one that conquered death, hell, and the grave. You and I need to come to a place where we don't accept that what we currently see as the reality, that God can't step into it and do something with it. The enemy loves to make us believe that our circumstance will never change. Never accept a reality that God can't change. He can change it all. Some of it. Today, tomorrow, yesterday. He can, Listen, he can step into it, redeem it, heal it, fix it, repair it, give it back. Don't be like this guy who was so 
entrenched in his circumstance that he looked at somebody who wanted to change it and go, I can't. I got nobody to help me. Because Jesus is looking at you going, I can change it. I can give it back. I can repair it. I can help it. I can fix it. I can redeem it. I can bring it back to life. I can give it back. When I meet Jesus, my reality changes. Number three, this is the last thing that this story shows me. And as the band comes tonight, the last thing this story shows me, actually there's a lot of things, but the last thing I'm, I'm going to give to you tonight is that he rarely gives what we need the way we're looking for it. Now this is a, this is a game changer because a lot of times you're looking for it in a very specific way. And God, God so many times in Scripture delivers what people need packaged in a way that they would never expect. He brought me back to the Old Testament, a prophet named Elijah. Not Elisha, those were two different people. Elijah. There was a moment in Elijah's ministry and life where he went to a king and said, for a very long time there's going to be no rain. Back in the Old Testament, prophets would speak on behalf of God. God had given Elijah a word to give the king and the kingdom. There was some wickedness going on. And so Elijah said, for, for a good bit, there's going to be no rain. There's going to be drought. And so then God tells Elijah to go and hide. Because I want to preserve you. I want to provide for you. And probably because some people want to, they got it out for you. And there's no rain coming. There's drought. There's famine. Back in those days, if there was no rain, there was no crops. If there was no crops, there was no food. If there was no food, you die. Right now, it's as easy as Uber Eats, Taco Bell. It's at your place in like six and a half minutes. But back in those days, people had to make their own food. If there was no rain, there was no food. What, what does all this have to do with God bringing me stuff that uh, like I wouldn't expect or, or the stuff that I need in ways I wouldn't expect? I'll tell you. God sent the ravens. Y'all know what a raven is? It's a bird. Nasty bird, a black bird. They're gross. They're ugly. They're, they're mean birds. Scripture recounts how God, God sends ravens to provide food for this prophet. Now, I don't know if you've ever been to a place where you're starving, but you would not care where your food came from, just that I ate. I remember another story where a, a widow, a widow had run out of flour and oil. She was about to make one single cake, one last meal for her and her son, and then they were going to die. This prophet shows up. He goes, no, 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 don't make it for you. Make it for me. And what I want you to do is I want you to go and take the vessels of oil, to as many vessels as you can collect. Go to your neighbors. Go to everybody. Clear out Tuesday morning and, and Hobby Lobby. Get all the vessels. And God's going to begin to pour out oil. You're going to have more than you could ever imagine. What I know about in moments of I don't got it is that God provides in ways that we cannot see it. I remember another story where the disciples had a bunch of people. Um, Jesus had packed out. It was a, it was a concert, y'all. Jesus was preaching forever. Preaching so long that it was getting late and they needed to send the people away to get food because they thought it was going to be like a 30-minute message. But they showed up. Jesus was preaching and it was like 19 and a half hours, so everybody's hungry. But there's not enough time to go get something to eat and they're in a remote place and the disciples are looking at Jesus going, we don't got it. And one of the bold ones spoke up and said, we should send them away to go get it. And Jesus looked at him and said, don't send them anywhere. You give them something to eat. Could you imagine being those people in that moment? God, God, uh, Jesus, I don't know if you know what we packed, but we don't got it. We don't got it. Jesus goes, what do you have? All right. Well, I got, I got a stick of gum. What do you, Peter, what do you got? Man, I got, I got a couple of broken talkies in my pocket and um, the half-eaten M&M, okay? What's this little kid got? Well, he's got, he's got a couple fish and some loaves. 
Yeah, let's use that. Jesus, here, we got some loaves and some fish. Perfect. Jesus blessed it. Gave it back to the disciples. And started to hand it out. It says that there were 5,000 men plus women and children. Depending on who you read or what blog you're looking at, 20 to 25,000 people there fed off five loaves and two fish. Why does all of this matter? Because in moments of I don't got it, he has always been it. And when I need it, it comes in ways that I don't expect it. So for some of us, we're going, God, I need peace of mind. Or I need, I need more emotional health. Or, or you know what? I need a closer relationship with you. And so as a result of I need a closer relationship with you, he actually begins to strip some friends from your life. And you're going, God, this is painful. Why are you doing this? Why is this happening? And he's going, because the people that were feeding into your mind and your heart were causing negativity, and they were actually pulling you from me. So if I remove them, you can actually advance closer to me. Sometimes the thing that we need, it doesn't arrive in a pretty way. God, I want to, use, I want to be used greatly. Okay, he says, just start to serve. Start coming early on Wednesday nights. You want to preach to the masses someday? Start setting up chairs at your youth group. Well, well God, I mean, I, teach me how to preach. That's what I'm really here for. He says, no, no, no. Because that's serving people. And if you can't serve people in this way, I can't use you in that way. See, so often we, we want what we want, and we want it the way that we want it. And God goes, I am it, but I'm not going to always package it the way that you want it. I'm going to bring in it oftentimes in a way that you don't expect it. The Israelites against Goliath, it was not a warrior that God sent to slay a giant. It was a shepherd boy named David with a stone. It does not happen the way that you think it's going to happen. Verses 14 and 15 of this story, it says, but afterward, Jesus found this man in the temple. He says, now you are well. And he says, so stop sinning. So God brought, Jesus brought the healing that the man wanted. But, but really what was Jesus there to do? Not just heal a man's physical body, but to heal a man's soul. We read in the story, the, the Jewish people took issue with what was happening. Sometimes the things that, that God wants to do in our life, people are going to look at and go, but wh why are you changing? Why are you becoming, you're different now. You ever heard this when you try to get serious with your relationship with Jesus? You're different now. You think you're better than me. No, 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 no. I'm not better than you. I just realized how much God has done in my life and how much he wants to do in my life. And the same is, is, is true of you, how much value he places on my life. So I'm not going to cheapen it anymore. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to live for a lower standard. I'm not going to, I'm not just going to give myself away to any person or thing. I, I realize who God created me to be. So it's not about me being better than you. It's realizing who Jesus said that I am. So this story, Jesus doesn't just heal the man's situation, he heals his soul. What I need you to know is that Jesus is not just trying to call you from something. It's that he's always trying to call you to something. So it's not just, I want to call you out of the hurt of your heart. It's that I want to call you to a relationship with me. I don't just want to fix your broken heart. I don't want to just heal your fractured mind. I don't want to just uh, uh, come in and provide a band-aid for your emotional state. I want you to know me. I'm calling you to me. Tonight, if you're in the room going, I don't got it, good. You never will. Because that means you're operating 
the way that your Savior should be operating. And you and I, there's not a single person in here that can live up to who he is. There's only one that's come that is perfect. There is only one that has ever been sinless and blameless. There is only one that has been able to heal a soul. There is only one that died for your sins. There is only one. I don't got it. Jesus goes, it's okay. I am it. Tonight as we close... believe the entire room split into to two categories, man. I think if we all got real with ourselves, we would, we would all see a, an area of, of lack where we're digging in our proverbial pockets going, I don't got it. it Maybe in your friendships, it may be in, um, in, in, in your, man, in school right now. It may be in your emotional state. It may be in your mental state. It may be it may be in your family. It may be in your finances. It may be, I don't know, man. It may be in what God's calling you to. It may be in the habits you're trying to drop or the negativity that you're trying to overcome. There's a lot of places where we may come up empty. If we're honest with ourselves, I think a lot of us going, I don't got it. I don't got it. the second group of people who you're clearly recognizing I don't got it but but I recognize I, I, don't, I don't have him I need him I don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ or I had one but I walked away and I realized how empty I am without him I've been trying to do this on my own for so long it's not working I am broken I am fractured I am alone I am I am depressed I am I am fearful I am anxious I, I am numb I really do feel like the biggest thing that your generation is struggling with right now is numbness. I don't feel anything. I'm so apathetic. I don't care about anything and I don't feel anything. That's why we're so constantly on device after. I'm just trying to feel something, some sort of acceptance or sexual gratification or, 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 or some joy or some happiness. I just need another laugh. I just need another like. I just need another follow. I just need a, because I don't got it. But until you know him, until you know him, man, you're always going to, you're always going to turn up empty handed. So all over the room, what I want you to do is I want you to stand up on your feet. I want you to close your eyes, bow your head. Tonight, I want to give you an opportunity. Those of you in the room that you do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, and I'm going to ask that you would take this moment seriously. You're not talking. You're not moving around. This moment is between you and God. If you're here tonight and you go, I need a relationship with Jesus Christ. I fully recognize that I don't have one. Or I did, but I've walked away and I need to come back. Now, tonight is your moment and your opportunity. So when I count to three, I want you just to shoot your hand up, not reluctantly. Listen, nobody's, nobody's judging you. If there was ever a place where you say yes to Jesus, it's right here, and the people are going to celebrate it. That's you tonight. One, two, three. You say, I need, I need, I need. Come on, hands going up all over this place. Hands going up all over this place. Man, so many hands, so many hands, so many hands. I'm going to wait just a few more moments if that's you. Come on, tonight's your night. tell you how big of a smile this puts on Jesus' face right now. He's been waiting for this moment right here. That's why he gave his life for this moment right here. So youth fam, with those that raise their hand, this is what I want to do. All over the room, the entire room, I want us to pray this prayer. This becomes, those of you raise your hand, those of you online that are making this decision, this becomes your prayer tonight. Come on, all over the room, say, Jesus, tonight I give you my life all of who I am. Thank you for dying for me, for my sins, 
for the things that I've done that have broken your heart. Thank you for loving me even when I didn't always love myself. I choose you tonight. I love you, Lord. Would you heal me? Would you make me new? Would you help me to love you more and more and to know you more and more? It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can we give a huge hand to everybody? Come on, let's celebrate. Life changed. Eternity is different for these people. Directly after service, right out these doors, we're getting ready to, to just kind of capitalize on what we heard tonight. Worship team's going to lead us in, in a Grace Youth original. But before we do, if you made that decision tonight, directly out these doors, you're going to see a big red TV. It says Next Steps. Do not leave without hitting that table because what you decided in here should not stay here. It should go with you. Okay, for the rest of us, here's how we're gonna, here's how we're gonna act on what we just heard. Eyes closed, hands up. Eyes closed, hands up. Eyes closed, hands up. You go, this is weird. I've never done this before. The whole room's doing it. It's weirder not to do it. Hands up is just a sign of surrenderance. So tonight. If there is any area of your life where you're going, I don't got it, these words now become your anthem. So God, I pray for the next few moments where we feel like we do not have it. Would you show us you who has always been it? Lord, we need you now more than ever in our minds, in our hearts, in our spirits, in our families, on our teams, on our jobs. God, in every area of your life where we don't got it, we pray, show up in it. Man, so many of you made the best 
decision of your life for the very first time. And like Pastor Elisha said, heaven is rejoicing. Your youth fam is behind you. Make sure that you're hitting the next steps on your way out. And for those of you in the room, those of you joining us online, get signed up for a small group. Your life will be changed. You will take your relationship to the next level. You want to do it. If you haven't done it, take out that card, scan the QR code, get signed up. If you're joining us online, there's a link in our description. We want to see you get connected. So make sure you're doing that. If you're in the room, you're going to make your way out these doors and head to the small group fiesta. We got tacos. We got talkies. We got fun. Make sure you're hitting up that photo booth. We love you guys. Have a great night.